Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Law of Attraction Secrets podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Graziano, and I'm here today in a film studio. I am with someone who you guys will know the movies of. Producer Larry Kasanoff makes movies Terminator 2, True Lies, Mortal Kombat. He did Dirty Dancing. I know you know that one. Animated movies like Lego Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Out, and Theme Park Rise, Star Trek, The Borg Adventures, Marvel, Superheroes 4D, The Amazing Adventures of Superman of Spider-Man or Superman. Oh my God, you're in for such a treat today with going through movie history and we may have something in store for you. His book, A Touch of the Madness, How to Be More Innovative in Work and Life by Being a Little Crazy, comes out via Ben Bella Books, September 12th. So that's coming up soon. He is a graduate of Cornell University and the Wharton School of Business. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Larry Kasanoff. Hi, Natasha. I'm great to be here. Thanks for coming over. Thank you for having me. I am totally in awe of the studio. We've Thank been you. Walking Come hang out. <laughs> yeah, we need visitors. I love it so much. I'm, I'm in awe of your, actually, you're an amazing photographer. Thank you. On top of being a, a epic movie producer, Thank photography you. is stunning. Yeah, I love photography. Yeah, you just, did you naturally fall into it? Yeah, I, not, I, I, I got a camera a long time ago. My brother gave me a camera and I started shooting, I started taking it with me to movie sets and I started shooting in the background of movie sets and around movie sets and just things a little off the movie set and I started noticing that the more I did photography, the better I was at producing and the more I was producing, the better I did photography. But the difference is, I love both. Yeah. I love movies, but there's a thousand people. Photography, it's me and the subject and that's it. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you can just kind of like hone in on the subject. Yeah, that's it. So it's either, it's either I, if I shoot a model, I usually shoot, you know, with very few people around or my favorite thing in the world to do is travel around some exotic foreign city by myself and my camera. God, I love that. Yeah. And you just go have fun yeah, and I explore. Just wonder, yeah. I love that. Well, I, I like time travel, but I also like... <laughs> <laughs> have you done a lot of time travel? I have actually. <laughs> I, <laughs> so where are you off to I this weekend? <laughs> Do you want to come this weekend? Yeah, sure. Can you imagine what a fun date yeah, that would be yeah. or like fun activity yeah. to do? Where with would you go? Well, I would go back in time to to two places. Yeah. The Egyptians. Yeah. Because that's such an intriguing era to okay, me. True. And then I would go probably back to nineteen forties, not too far back, nineteen fifties, in Paris. Yeah. I like that era. Why would you go to? I would go to 1920s Paris. Oh, I would. I would go because we're doing a movie with this. I would go back to like you know the year zero, like right around oh, Jerusalem in the year zero, and um, I would go to the height of the uh, Silk Road Chinese court. Mm. But mostly, wouldn't it be great to go to the future? I mean, wouldn't that be really interesting to see what the hell's going to happen? That would be cool. Go to yeah. like the year 3000. Yeah, well, that's a lot in the future, but yeah, I suppose. Oh, well, how far in the future? I would go like fifty or hundred years in the future. Oh, really? Yeah, just to see. Just to see where things are go- where things are headed. You'll be here in fifty years. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you're in your prime. Well, you're then gonna, you want to jump ahead. Yeah, a <laughs> hundred years would be interesting because you would see, I think, flying. Well, we already have hover cars, things like that. You know, like cars flying, and will roads be roads? Will buildings? Maybe there'll be layers of buildings. Yeah, if you think about it, if you came from like a hundred years ago to today. Mm-hmm. There are things like cell phones and stuff, but we still wear shirts and pants. We yeah. still have buildings. We yeah. still have cars. Yeah. It's not all that different. It's so true. Yeah. So true. But a lot has changed. If you look at 100 years, on the other hand, how many things we now do have that you could never have, have imagined yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah. Even my grandma, you know, she the way she speaks, she's like, we, we never had any of this growing up. It wasn't yeah, even... But you know, I think everyone says that, you know, we always say, oh my God, the technological innovations now. But imagine you were of the age where there were no airplanes and then there were airplanes. Yeah, I mean, how crazy is that? Or no telephones and then there were telephones. Yeah, totally. So I think everyone, you know, there was a time when someone said this thing called the wheel that will never catch on. And then... You know, so it's always a new innovation. I love that. Well, Elon Musk is really at the front of that, isn't he? Like, just... I think everyone's in the front of it. That's what I, the book you mentioned, The Touch of the Madness, is about. It's just about how to be innovative. And the whole point is you have to be a little crazy and take chances. Mm. People are scared to take chances, I think, today. And so I think 
what sets people apart in innovation, whether it's huge or small, is someone's willingness to say, I'm, I think this is a great idea. Everyone told Thomas Edison he was crazy. Mm, and then look what he you went on and did. So. Okay, give me an example. Because I, 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 whenever I speak to you about Touch of the Madness, your new book, and, and this is so exciting. It's, it's coming out soon. It's, it's really unique and different. It's got such a great grasp of reality and the way that you, you know, can innovate. Give me an example or our audience an example of you saying yesterday about the ask, ask, ask. What does that mean? Well, one of the, there's three tenets to the, to the touch of the madness, but, but one of them is after you create, and we talk about how to do it, after you create what you want mm -hmm. in your mind, here's what I'm going to do. You have to ask, 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 ask everybody, anybody all the time and ask again for what you want. Mm -hmm. Here's an example. So uh, two years ago during the pandemic, we were doing an animated movie for Universal called Bobbleheads. You know, a little bobbling, <laughs> bobbleheads. And um, we want a chair to be in the movie playing chair as mm -hmm. bobblehead chair. So we asked her, we got it, she was in the movie, she's great, the movie was great, and when the movie came out, they asked people, People Magazine said to Cher, you've never done an animated movie before, why did you choose this one? And she said, I've never done an animated movie before because no one ever asked me before, but I did. So if, if Cher, one right. of the most talented, iconic people on earth, yeah. is sitting around and no one ever called her, can you imagine in your own life what you're w waiting to ask someone and you don't do it because you think, well, they'll never do this. <laughs> and, but sh no one has share, so ask. So we just, whatever you want, however crazy it sounds, just keep asking. That is a really great example, and you're right. If you do not ask, you will not receive. I always say to people, you know, someone says in the, who works for me, oh, well, you know, how come that you brought in a new person? Well, you never asked me for that role. <laughs> if you wanted the role, then come to me and say, hey, I want it, you've got to ask if you want something. Asking you shall receive. You know, the way I got the, the, the title and the name of the book is I, w I wanted to be a movie producer since I was a little kid. Oh, yeah, I want to hear about that in a moment. Well, so I got very that. lucky, and I got a great job out of college uh, being head of production for a, a, a growing film studio right. during the height of the home video era. So the home video era then, in the late 80s, was like Netflix today. All of a sudden, there were video stores. They had no product, and they needed product. So my first job right out of school was to run a film slate and make, 25, make 80 movies a year. Make them, buy them, co-produce them. We don't care if they fail and you lose money, you're fired. Mm -hmm. And so we made horror movies and kind of you know funny comedies and action movies. And then along came this movie called Platoon. Mm -hmm. And Platoon was a really serious movie about the Vietnam War. And the director had done one great movie, but it didn't make a lot of money. And, and all the people in it were not famous, which we, we always cast famous people. They became famous, but they weren't. And my boss said to me, you're crazy, this isn't the kind of movie we make. And mm -hmm. he said, listen, you're the head of production, you can do what you want, but if you do it and it fails, you're fired. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so I, I mean, I, I got the best job in the world, I can't believe I have this job, but I, I did it, I greenlit the movie, and when I saw Platoon the first time, I'm the only one, it's a very serious movie. Yeah. I'm, it, it, the tagline is the first casualty of war is innocence. I'm the only one in the world to giggle my way through Platoon, because I thought, I'm not getting fired, I'm not getting, it was great. It was so great, it won Best Picture that year. And then a few months later, I ran into the director in New York at a bar at night. And he bought me a drink and he said, you know, kid, I always liked you. You have a touch of the madness. And I thought, touch of the madness? Is he saying I'm a little crazy? Am I a little crazy? Is he calling me? And then I thought, <laughs> I thought well, wait a minute, think about it. My boss had a touch of the madness to hire a 25-year-old kid to run an 80-picture film slate with mm -hmm. no prior experience. Oliver, the director, had a touch of the madness <laughs> to insist on making a Vietnam movie the way no one had ever done it. And I had a touch of the madness by betting the best job in the world on it. So then it became, that, that has been my touchstone ever since, mm -hmm. that, that phrase, a touch of the madness. It's exactly what I think you need. Innovation demands a touch of the madness. And so I always thought of that. I always live my life that way. I always encourage everyone I work with and be with to live that way, with a touch of the madness. I love that. I think that's the best way to live. A touch of the madness means nothing's ever boring. Nothing is ever boring. That's true. <laughs> Your life is not boring for not sure. <laughs> and like you, everything is has got that spice almost on it. It's like a little. You know, the, the current of the river of life will always try and pull you towards the middle. Yeah. Everybody, everywhere, everywhere, all the time, it will try and pull you towards the middle, pull you towards the middle. And if you don't want to be in the middle, which and I suggest, if you want to be great and very successful, you shouldn't be in the middle. The best thing you have to swim against that is innovation or creativity, yep. and for that you need to touch the madness. Yeah, you do, and absolutely, and whatever you wanna do, you need to lead and just go for it, and yep. believe in it wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Once you have your idea, never, ever, ever give it up. Everyone's gonna tell you you're crazy. Everyone tells me I'm crazy all the time. Give me an example of something that you went through in your life where 
you were told it's never going to work, where you maybe even failed, but you had wholehearted belief and you made it happen? When I um, decided to make a movie out of Mortal Kombat, yeah. so every movie a- attempted at that time out of a video game had failed. Everyone. And, and people thought, you cannot make movies out of video games. It's going to fail. And I found Mortal Kombat because we had made Terminator 2 right before then. And our Terminator 2 arcade game, arcade was a place where you used to go and put money in the machine to play video games. <laughs> and, and, and you've so, got <laughs> We've got some over here. And it. so the arcade game for Terminator was really successful. And we became friendly with the game company. Mm-hmm. And they told me, like, nine months later, we're testing a game that's testing even better than than you're then not Terminator 2. I said, can't have that. And I was in Chicago, so I went to visit them for fun. I played the one version of the game that existed in the chairman's office of the game company. And I turned to him and I said, this is Star Wars meets Enter the Dragon. It's my two favorite genres. You know, it's martial arts and science fiction and fantasy. And I said, if you give me the rights, I'll produce in every medium in the world. And this is the guy who owned the game. You know what he said to me? You're crazy. Piece of crap video game. (laughs) No one liked it. Everyone thought I was crazy. Everyone, everyone, everyone. And now... 20-something years later, we're on our 20th Mortal Kombat production. We're still making it. Wow. Mm. What a great story. So now it sounds mm-hmm. crazy to say Mortal Kombat was a crazy idea. because now You, know, because it's you a, couldn't imagine it any other way. Right. But then everyone told me I was crazy. Interesting. But this is part of life. You're going to be told you're crazy. It's never going to work. You know, I was told, oh, you'll never do that. You'll, you'll never be a, a, a motivational speaker. You'll never be a, a host. You'll, ne- you'll never do the things that you've done because of X, Y, Z. But the more you want it and, and you go for it wholeheartedly, you don't listen to the noise. You don't worry about the noise. Can I tell you something? I'm at the point now where if I have an idea and people say to me, oh, my God, that's great, that's fantastic, I get a little uneasy. But if people say, if I have an idea now for a movie and people say, you're crazy, you'll never pull that off. You know. That's I, so I feel, funny. I feel this, I feel this <laughs> warmth of a touch of the madness embracing me like a, like a mist in, in a nice walk in the morning on the beach. And I, and I go, ah, <laughs> touch of the madness is back. And, and I go and make it. I want to personally invite you to The Book Club, hosted by Natasha Graziano. That's me. It's every Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, where you're going to tap into your unlimited power of your mind, where you're going to understand how to access parts of your brain you have not been using until now. I'm going to show you how to unlock the key to abundance in your life, how to turn on the tap to everything you desire. The same way that I attracted my soulmate into my life in three weeks, the same way that I went from broke, no money in the bank, hundreds of thousands in debt. I was a single mom, thought I had nothing going on in my life. I was suicidal at my worst point. And I have transformed my life into who I am today in just two and a half, three, four years. I've created the empire that I now live in and lead and help so many people all over the world, just like yourself, so that you too can go on and inspire your community. I can't wait to show you this method, these practical tools that are gonna help you to unlock the life of your dreams too. And we do it all in the book club. Across the next 60 days, the rollout is fire. We have celebrities coming in, we've got top coaches coming in, we've got a squad of people who are there in this community who are helping you to access those parts of your brain, helping you through the words they're preaching, the words they're speaking, the lessons we're giving out. So it's your turn to shine. It's your turn to come and receive. You give so much in your life. You're probably the person who just always is giving and giving and giving. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to sit back once a week, relax and indulge in a space that's completely for you, just for you. And whilst it's still free, hit that link below and reserve your seat at the book club. The link is below. Join now and I'll see you there. Can I just say it's becoming a movement, a touch of the madness. Yeah, it should be a movement. It should be a movement. What's your craziest thing? Yeah, okay, well, I like that. My craziest thing was... Oh God, when I decided that I wanted to out of, and I was ill, I was unwell, I had an illness at the time after I had my son and I decided I wanted to go and help people in the world. But yet I'm literally suffering with this autoimmune disease that's keeping me in bed all the time and I'm unable to like even function and be a mother. But yet I have this calling to get up and go and help people in the world and be a coach. And I was like, how on earth is that going to happen for me? But I knew I had to. So I knew if I could heal myself and show that I could do it for myself, surely I could share that story with other people. And that was crazy. I remember 
even to myself thinking that is crazy. And then I thought, okay, I'm battling this sort of conversation in my head of like, you can't do it, you can do it. That's the inner critic. And I said, fuck the inner critic, focus on the calling. And the calling was so strong. And I just got up and said, no, I'm going to do this. And I, and I literally remember walking around my mother's garden, wearing a dressing gown, pushing my son in his little stroller, bare feet grounding into the earth, freezing, may I add, in like ice cold UK, walking around this garden. And as I'm walking, I'm just saying, I am the number one female motivational speaker in the world. I am the number one mindset coach female in the UK. And I just decided it I declared it and I owned it and it was crazy and even to this day I still think fuck I can't believe I'm a coach to so many stars <laughs> that's great that's great perfect I'm mean, like me perfect. you know that's real great welcome to the madness thank you <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, but at such of the madness, I hope somebody at home is 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 finding that. What did you? What was your crazy? Yeah, what moment? was your crazy thing? I like that. And the other thing too. So I'll, I'll ask you this, but if you could call anybody in the world today and ask them one question, yeah. who would you call and what would you ask? Mm. Oh, I love this. Okay, if I, I would call. Can it be someone not alive? No, someone alive. Oh, someone alive. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, I don't want to go political because I have something really funny, but we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you, whatever yeah. your thing is. I would truthfully call somebody alive. I would call Oprah. Okay. Um, and I would ask her, how did you come through so successfully in, an, in a world, a time when everything was so suppressing? How did you lift up and reach a billion people? So why don't you call her? Because they don't have a number. I know you're going to say. Mm. No, because people don't, people don't do it because they don't think they can. Right. Because you ju it just doesn't occur to you that they can. I had a phenomenal professor in college. She was this incredibly eccentric sociologist. I was a research assistant. And she used to say, my, my goal is to give you a set of glasses through which to see the world. And she taught me to do that. So starting from when I was a freshman in college, I used to call people all the time. If I was assigned to like do a report in a company, I would just call the CEO. And they would call me back even in college. So you can do it, but you think you can't because you're not told you can. You can call Oprah. You just, it never occurred to you. But now that I've said this, maybe tomorrow you'll call Oprah. So I challenge people, if you have that, go call them. So what do you get to lose? You know, you know what? what? You know, yeah. It's so easy now. You know, there was a time you actually had to pick up the telephone. <laughs> now you can email them. You can DM yes. them. There's so many things you can do. There are so many Why things. Why not? I love that. And I would probably call, you know, the notebook, the yeah. movie? Um, I can't remember her name in, the, in the real life, the main actress in The Notebook. And I would ask her what that felt like in that moment to be so deeply in love in that film. And were you fully in that role or did you just... So let's get her on this podcast so you can ask her. Okay, good. Done. Yeah. Done. That's done. what's happening. All so right. if, you're, if you're the agent We're of <laughs> this gorgeous star... In the fact that you can't remember her name is probably not going to help you, There's so you might want to edit that part out, but... <laughs> Get me what's her name. Yeah, wait, what is her name? We need to find it. But anyway, so she's amazing. I know her from so many movies. And uh, okay, yeah, okay, that's true. So you should just get up and do it. Do and, it. and have no excuses. None. But you know, it's so funny in today's world. And, and it is a generational thing as well. My generation, I feel like we, well, maybe it's not a generational thing. Maybe it's when you hit 30. Suddenly I'm like, oh my God, I, I know I can do this. I believe more in myself. I've had more life experience and I just... I'm a go-getter. You know, I was always a go-getter, but in your 20s, you're much more unsure of yourself, you know? You know, I don't really believe that. I mean, I, one of my nephews, I have great nieces and nephews, but, but one of them has been calling me since he was 11 years old. Oh, you were telling me? Calling me, I'm going, yeah, okay, Uncle Larry, how, how are we doing this deal? Did we get these rights? Did we make the back-end deal? How's the script coming? I mean, he just, he, he just had it. You could tell right away, and now he's doing great in, 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 in banking, and you could just tell. He just absolutely had that, impetus to call up all the time and ask anybody for what he wants. So, so I think it's kind of in you. Mm, and you can cultivate mm -hmm. it, but I don't think something magical happens when you turn 30. That's funny. So I personally have always had it in me, but I watch my students at, in their 20s have insecurities that 30-year-olds don't. And I see this like evolution, but perhaps you're right. It is inside. It's innate. I think so, a lot of our interns here will tell us stuff like they're just... They're, they don't know how to talk to people on the phone because they're not used to conversations. So they're, they're texting all the time. Mm. And so I think they get a little nervous about calling. But when I say call, yeah, you can call or you can text or you can email or you can write yeah. a letter. There's a million things you can do. 
but you just got to do I it. I love calling. I'm, I like calling. I, I love calling. I'm, I'm so phone. old school. I have yeah. one, an old phone like in my <laughs> oh, house, an cool. antique. Do you have one of these? <laughs> no, I don't know what to get you for great. your birthday. Oh my God. <laughs> so fun. And, and I will sit and I connect it to my phone. Like, oh, that's great. Hello. I, I, have you see it on my Instagram? There's no, a picture of you. Yeah, like it's. <laughs> and I sit and I'm like, hello. And it makes me feel like I'm in my own era. And I just go back in time to the 20s, wherever I am. And I just love it. And I, and I pick That's up the phone. Yeah. yeah. I'm in my own movie. I believe, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I see the whole world as movie shots. All day long, I just see movie shots. Oh, really? Yeah, I see everything. I can imagine. I, was gonna I see it. people, movies, things. Uh, 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 I, I see everything as a movie shot. I love that. Yeah. So you can tell within a few seconds if someone is, is like going to be in a movie. They've got it. Or if you meet I someone. can tell if someone, I think they have the talent in yeah. a second. But talent's half the battle. If you ha and, and most people in, in movie business who don't make it, they don't make it not because they don't have the talent or the intelligence. They don't have the perseverance. They don't really. They, they, want, they say they want to be in the movie business because they want to be in a yacht and can and have a lot of fun. But when it comes down to the work that it takes and all the things we're talking about, because, you know, we're talking about all these great st stories where Cher said yes, and people say no all the time. Mm. And so you have to have the perseverance. And so talent's half the battle. That's the easiest thing to tell when we're casting or hiring a director or writer or, or whatever. It's the perseverance. Perseverance is everything in every field. Everything. Yeah, every field. And, yeah. and, and like, if you don't want it enough, someone else does. Yep. And if you do not have tenacity and you're willing to show up and unconditionally not conditionally it's raining today i'm just not going to show up on set like come on you're going to be in a scene that's like you're going to be doing something crazy i believe life is a movie i often say this on the show life is a movie you choose your character you write your script right i coach scripting all the time you, we write out our script i was with two actresses this morning on my uh, book club i brought them on and we were talking and i said and they've both played in big disney films and uh low, you know you probably know them actually anime and all kinds of other great things animation they were sitting and i said and i've known them for years so i just said come on and we'll talk about it because i want you to show how you become the character and what you do to get into it and they've both done my scripting method for years and manifested great roles and all kinds of things but it just shows you life is a movie and you choose your character and i choose my character to be committed to show up every single day because if i don't show up nobody else is gonna <laughs> drag me nobody else is living that, listen that is the number one thing you would be shocked at the amount of people who don't show up when we promote them or we give them the opportunity or, or for whatever reason they're scared of success they're scared of failure they don't want do the work it, it's the number one thing that's interesting you say that scared of success a lot of people are scared there's a there's a great quote from nelson mandela it's not only the dark but the light within we fear mm. and i think he's right i think a lot of people fear their light within i don't deserve it my little brother won't like me anymore if i get it there's a lot of reasons can we say that quote again it's not only the dark but the light within we fear I, isn't that beautiful mm. That is so. Wish I thought of it. That's <laughs> you've come up with some good stuff. <laughs> that, that's pretty beautiful yeah. because we, a lot of the time one is scared of the light. Yeah. There are, the, it's scary to think. I often get to moments where I'm like, oh my God, like, okay, if I do this, I'm going to be reaching. There's no looking back. No. Yeah. Your it. life will change. The life changes. And when life changes, you learn how your friends are. You, everyone thinks, mm. you, they say you learn how your friends are when something bad happens, which is true. Yeah. But you also learn who your friends are when something good happens. Because mm -hmm. a lot of shot and Freud and people aren't happy for you. And, mm. and therefore, it change is scary, even good change. But whatever it is, and it's real, and I'm, I'm not being unempathetic towards it, but if you don't get over it, it it's hard to advance. Absolutely, and you have to navigate through that yeah. and very carefully as well and know how to. Anyone who gets any kind of level of success, suddenly like you're the only one in your in your small town who suddenly has a really nice car or you're the only one in, in your, in, I grew up in a village, in a farm, you know, so suddenly having like all these wonderful like materialistic things, which I thought were really cool at the time now couldn't give a shit about, but like, <laughs> you know, let's <laughs> just say like... <laughs> I suddenly, you know, had a really nice watch and a car. Like, at the, ugh, I thought it was great. And I drive back to the village and, oh, my God, you know, look at this, like, amazing, you know, Range Rover or sports car I decided to show up in. You know, like, wow, and she's so flashy. And, like, it was like, you know, but then you start to realize, like, oh, people start to talk about you or you hear a little, you know, and whatever. You, you're you going to be the first one to do it. Be ready for it. Just own it. Own who you are. And I had to own it. But at the time, I didn't own it. And at the time, then I lost it all, of course. And then I rebuilt from actual foundations and realize what is real and what's not including friends yeah and i have to say to this day and i'm very proud of it like i will stand here and, and very much say i do not have any of the same friends that i had before i was 25 none none wow. one who i keep in touch with and i love her one two cousins obviously i have many cousins but two who i stay in touch with all the other friends i went to boarding school with i did my 20s forget it hmm. 
because we have evolved so differently. Right. Well, that's just something people grow apart. Yeah, people yeah. just, well, I just went on a, a different trajectory. I just found a more uh, spiritual path, and a lot of people stayed getting fucked up and drinking every night, and I just evolved. You know, we were talking about the our, my book, we talked about create and then ask, and then the third thing, and there's only three, is I think you got to play. I think you got to try if you can yes. to live everything, to live your life, to live everything in a state of play. People, the, people always ask me about movies and say, well, what would you have done here? Why did this happen? And there's always a reason they can always tell it, but that's it's the expression here called being a Monday morning quarterback. You know, <laughs> it, the game's over. I mean, now let's go play the next game. And, you know, it, the more you can think of it as fun and a game and play it and go play the next game, the better you do. In a state of play, you're more open-minded, you're more creative, and it, it's, it's easier and it's more fun. And so sometimes, you know, your friends don't like it, but, you know, so what? You just mm -hmm. go do something else. And, just, and, do. and don't take it all so seriously. I love don't, that. It doesn't mean don't take it, uh, don't work hard at it. Yeah. But try and think of it as a game. See, that's cool. Looking mm. at life almost. Look at game. life that way. I see life sometimes as a simulation. I often say. Really? No, I do. I think. We're, Maybe you're in the matrix. Yes. <laughs> I often think, are we just some aliens video game? Like, is somebody literally on another planet just like. Just playing like, you. Yeah, literally playing me. Or am I playing myself, but I'm awake in this video game. So like, he's like the alien is like, this is his game, right? It's like a video game. I actually believe we're in a video game a lot of the time. <laughs> And I'm like, so I can That's do anything I want. And I do. And I'm like, you know, I love Tomb Raider. And I just think like one day I'm just, you know, I, I just imagine. And I dress up a lot of the time. I have fun with it. Like, That's great. I show up as characters. I do. Like, That's I great. enjoy that. Yeah. Playing. Talking about playing, A Touch of the Madness. When you created it, were there other stories inside of the book where, like, examples of you going through life and playing and doing things that were against the odds or things that... The, the whole... The book is really fun, I think, and really simple. And it's largely all stories about my life in the movie business using them as examples. Yeah. It's not a didactic charts and graph book. It's all movie stories. There's, like, I don't know how many, but there's all stories. Like Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay, give us a story now about something, like, from a movie. Something that's maybe in the book that they can go and buy them. Like, oh, my God, I well, the, so here's a, here's a play idea. So what will you do in a state of play versus what you won't do in a state of play? Mm -hmm. So the, in that job at Vestron, the, my first job, the, they had already ordered a movie when we started to make movies and I was head of production. And yeah. the movie was going to be shot in Italy and it was sort of like a, we would call it today like a Game of Thrones movie oh, for like one one millionth the budget. I mean, it was really it was just a little bad <laughs> movie. And my boss said to me and the other the production uh, person, Nana, he said, okay, I want it to be sexy. I want it to be violent. I want it to have, to, to have battles. I want swords. I want everything. I, and he just, you know, every extreme thing you could think of in an exploitation movie, he wanted. And we, we started this funny thing saying, and, and, and snakes and wizards, and snakes and wizards. <laughs> we just thought that was funny. And so that was our battle cry. And the, we were the studio, and the producer was already in Italy, and we would have conference calls with him. We used to end the calls by saying, and more snakes and wizards. Don't forget the snakes and wizards. We were kidding. It was just like our, our little joke. So we get to Italy. It's my first movie. I'm shooting it. It's going well. The crew's really nice. We're in Rome. And the crew keeps saying to me, we have a surprise for you. We have a surprise for you. And then one day after lunch, we all go out back, you know, and, and we're in the hills outside Rome. And we're just standing there and I see nothing. And then from like, like you see this little dot and, and, and some like sort of smoke or some dust. And it gets closer and closer and closer. And now the crew's all around me. Somehow a band is playing. I don't know where they got a band. <laughs> and, and this truck drives up and back, and it's a circus truck. And it, the doors burst open, and out come all these people dressed like wizards with boa constrictors around their neck. And they're all applauding, and they're so happy. That but you know what? That is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, but you know what? There are no snakes and wizards in the movie. It was a joke. We just forgot to tell them <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> and so now I'm sitting on our movie set going, what do I do? So not in a state of play, you would say to yourself, a 12-foot Burmese python is staring me in the face, wanting to be in my movie. What the hell? This is a disaster. In a state of play, you say, you know what? Let's put them all in the movie and have more wine and the hell with it. Did you do it? Yeah. They're all in the movie. And you know what? And you know what? The movie, honestly, is terrible. But. That's not the point. It's not the point because it made a fortune. <laughs> what the fuck is this song? And so we just put in all the snakes and wizards. In a state of play, you put in the snakes and wizards. Not in a state of play, you're scared to death that a Burmese python is staring you in the face. That is such a great analogy mm. and so real. You actually lived it. Yeah, you, Snakes you and Wizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Snakes and Wizards. Well, that's the story. The movie's not called that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet someone's watched this movie. Oh, I wow. hope Wow. So. Really shite. 
Oh, oh that's terrible. That's but just again, so they made a fortune. What's your favorite movie that you produced? My next one. Oh, oh great God. answer. Yeah. You always oh. have to think that way. That once a movie's done, honestly, it's like, you know how you see like animals in the wild and once their kid yeah. is older, it's like, oh, all right, see, I mean, maybe I'll run across you. But yeah. there's nothing you can do about it anymore. As a producer, you know, producing is like a safe haven for control freaks and there's nothing much you can do. So I, I almost never watch my movies once they're done. I always focus on the next one, the next one. And you have to believe, like I said, you have to believe in your ideas. You have to believe the next one is the best thing I've ever done. Or, you, or it's too hard to do. You just never do it. Oh. So I always think of the next one. I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. so your next one is, what well, you don't share now, but whenever you're ready to come on, you can come chat about it. Yeah, I will. Oh, yeah. we're so excited. We got a bunch of great stuff because we I developed those movies during the pandemic and they're really And also, well. talking about movies, for any actors who are listening today, you've got this amazing project. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us more about that because that's So, really you know, we have a lot of uh, side companies. We make theme park rides and, and, the, and I realize... You make theme park rides? Yeah. We that make was just like a side note. By the way, the fact that your son was on a roller coaster is safe. <laughs> we made that. We made Star Trek, the Borg Adventure and the uh, Mario Marvel uh, superheroes 4D and the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. So we make theme park rides, and we decided to start one more company, which can we just started. Can you get me a started. pass to Universal? <laughs> I've <heard> asked that. <laughs> I can't get me a pass to Universal. Um, I'm kidding, but um, <laughs> we'll talk later. But um, so, so the number one question everyone asks me is this: in my life in the movie business, especially if they're not in the movie business, I want to be in the movie business. I want to make a movie. I want to be famous. Everyone wants to be. A movie oh, star. You tell me about this. Yeah, even if they're like, an an ad, even if they're an accountant. Yeah, they sit and, with you and they're like, and everyone wants to be famous. And people yeah. say to me, you know what? This happened to me today. You know what? My story is so interesting, and to them it is. And so we decided, well, why not enable that? So we started a company called Super Giant Studios. I started with a partner named Daniel Brea, who's a very successful maker of short films. Mm -hmm. And in Super Giant Studios, enables anybody to star in a short film that we will produce with a Hollywood celebrity that can be anything they want. So anyone now who wants to be in a movie, they can be in a, our, they can be in a movie. This is so and cool. It, it, it's, it's weird that no one's thought of it before. And we just announced it and we made a deal with the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, which is a very, very beautiful, old, famous mm. hotel in Beverly Hills. And they're doing a promotion where they'll, they'll fly you out and give you a carpet and the whole, their whole nine yards if you want to do it that way. It's a great way to do it. Or you can do it directly with us. And anyone, anywhere who wants to be in a movie, they now can be in their own movie. And we thought, well, why not? Why, why shouldn't you have that? I mean, you get so many other things you can do. Oh, it's so awesome. So, and, and it's just a great way to foster talent or give people the once-in-a-lifetime dream. Yeah. And we just decided to do it. I'm gonna and it's, just, it's, just, it's You know what? It's really just fun. Yes. Because everyone, it's wish fulfillment for well, everyone. Well, my friend's doing it. I, I, he's yeah, he's your friend's an actor. Yeah. He's gorgeous. And I said to him, oh my gosh, you have to do this. Yeah. Like you can go and have your movie made. This is how you make you it your lucky brand. Yeah. Like this yeah. is it. Such a great thing. I'm going to put the link below for yeah. anybody that wants to go and explore that and find out how they can yeah, do. It's, it's make really fun. a movie. How fun. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, if I'm ever ready to dive into acting, I know where I'll go. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, I love that. How, how fun. I'll put the link below for everyone who's, who's wondering. And I'll also put Larry's sort of website and anything else below that you guys want to connect on. You want his new book, A Touch of the Madness. You'll be able to pre-order really soon. So the link will be there. We'll have to have you on again, I think, when the book's out. That'd or, be great. Yeah, maybe like... Oh, I have an idea. We'll talk about it after. Maybe right. I'll maybe I'll like you know at the event vibe like just yeah 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 yes, yeah 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 that's I, a good idea yes. yeah, 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 yeah. oh my gosh yeah, yeah. one million percent I can yeah. already see it this is so exciting cool. when I think of a touch of the madness I it reminds me of Alice in Wonderland for some yeah, reason it should. Yeah, yeah yeah it should remind you of Alice in Wonderland because that's a great example of a touch yeah. of the madness and the the cover of the book has got like a we've got our own rabbit. <laughs> You can put up a picture of it. Oh my God, we will. His no, name's like, Alfonso. And you can see, this is this is the book right here. Uh, Alfonso. That's the rabbit. Yeah. The rabbit. Yeah. There we go. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? No, it's, that's what it's about. I mean, when I'm thinking about my book covers, I, I didn't actually have my face on it. It's really interesting. I didn't Why? have my face on it. I do on this one, but I didn't on my face. Because... I, I even to the last minute, I only changed it with my face last minute because I wanted it to be more about the book than me. Yeah. And I wanted it to be more of a legacy. And then I thought, actually, no, I should probably have my book on the first one at least. And then later on come with just the, the imagery after my name is already, you know. And so now I'm fine. Now I could do it without my, my face because I think I've got, you know, enough people who know who I am. However... You know, I like it both ways, but it's always, I think it's really interesting going to a bookstore and something jumps out of yeah, you. Yeah, and it's like, right. that rabbit, that's going <laughs> to jump out of people for sure. That is going to jump. That's you want something crazy. Well, you know, you, if, if you're telling a book out of Touch of the Madness, the cover can't 
not be a touch of the madness. Yeah. And you know, we do a lot of animation, and so and so I love cartoon characters and animated characters. Oh, and, animation! You know. What's your favorite animation thing you've done? Your next one. <laughs> yep, you got it. <laughs> but you did something with Spider Man. We did uh, Spider Man theme park rides. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I think we just went on a theme park ride. Yeah, that's what we, we just did. We did that ride. You did that right? Yeah. That was you guys with the really ridiculous cue. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That means people like it. Yeah, they do. They yeah. love it. Wow. Yeah. So when I was walking around the studio here, I was in awe. There's so many original pieces, doors, and statues from Mortal Kombat. Right. That's pretty amazing. How do you bring them to life, like a statue? How do you... Well, so, you know, to like... You're referring to some of the, the statues yeah. in the back, which were actually, it, it's, a, it's an art that's gone now. It was actually hand carved yeah. by artisans into this sort of hard foam and then coated in a certain way. And then we digitally brought them alive. Today, you would probably just make the whole statue digitally. You probably wouldn't have one. So we, we keep them, even though they're huge, not only because we have fondness for Mortal Kombat, but because it just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, Props and things like that don't exist. They've evolved so much. It's just, all dig it's just much easier to make it so digitally. So when someone's acting on a set now, Oh, this is so new to me. Um, I mean, I did the Prince of Persia, which was like 12 years ago. But I remember it, they were like, there was like a, a box, like a CGI yeah. box. And it was like, that was going to be some kind of, you know, fancy right. thing. And we had to look at it and be like, you know, right. talk to it. It was a very interesting thing to be emotional right, with the box. Right, right. How do they do it today? Same sort of thing. Well, it's the, same, it's the same thing. What a lot of people are doing now is a new version of an old technique and, and they're LED rooms. So the rooms like the one we're in now, yeah. but instead of just a, a green walls, which you can, you know, remove people from the background, they're actually digital backgrounds. Ah. And, and so it's, it's funny because there used to be something called rear screen projection long ago where, yeah. where you know, the, in the 40s movie, they'd be running in front of a screen of something chasing them and you'd shoot them in the screen. Yeah. Then it went to what you just described and now it's going back to a version of the rear screen projection except the projection is digital imagery that's made that's beautiful. Wow. You know, and, and it's interesting because there's a lot of schools of thought on it. I mean, we do a ton of that stuff. But whenever we're making something on location, yeah. we're about to, we're soon to announce a big location movie. Um, I I like going to the location. So do I. Yeah. But I like going to look. I mean, I'm not a movie producer, but I see why, because you have so much culture and. and you, you know, it, it, it digitally there's a lot. I love it, and there's a million things you can do. So if if it doesn't exist, like it's an alien, you have to make it digitally. Or on the other hand, on the other extreme, if it's really boring, you want to put it in an airport. Well, you know, you, you can just make that digitally because everyone's seen an airport. Yeah. But now let's say you're going to an ancient city. It's really hard to capture the whole thing if you don't go shoot it because the digital artists are then tasked with trying to recreate it and there's so many details. You know, if you look at the city of Venice, my favorite city in the world, you, we Venice could... Venice as in... Italy. Yeah, Italy, no. not <laughs> Venice. <laughs> no, no. I was like, really? Um, you, 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 you couldn't... We don't know how to recreate that today. There are not enough artisans in the world to make Venice Italy today. You, so, but but you want to shoot there. So you want to shoot in Venice as opposed to tasking digital artists with recreating Venice because that, that you can do it but all those millions of years, I mean, those millions of details and all those years of wear and tear, it's very hard to recreate it. The audience doesn't literally know, but in the background of their minds, they know. People know things they don't know. You can look in a movie and go, eh, and another movie go, oh my God, and maybe not know why. Interesting, I was just watching The Chosen. Have you seen The Chosen, this new um, series that's out on, no. uh, was, well, some of it's on Netflix, I think, and uh, really interesting, and it's about um, sort of, essentially jesus christ but as a jew uh, and it's amazing uh, like you just it like it just makes you fall in love with the way that they were and everything it was beautiful like you i think it's pre-christianity right um i'm not please don't quote me somebody who's watching i'm not really too familiar in it but all i know is it's a beautiful movie and the reason i'm mentioning it is because I love the way that they are filming genuinely in what looks like somewhere like Israel. Israel. Yeah. And you can tell because of the architecture and the land, and it's just yeah. magical. We're, we have something, it, not to be announced yet, but something for Israel mm. in, next year. And oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you've got to see this then. Yeah, yeah, I, I will see it. But it, yeah, it, it, it's it's important. It's just gorgeous, and, and and you think to yourself, well, I could try and recreate this digitally, but this exists, so why not come here? Come, and of course, and you want to. Israel's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's and, so and beautiful. And I, th I think I also think actors are getting great at doing what you said, which yeah. is reacting to, you know, a green box with two little X's for eyes painted <laughs> on it. But I do think you know, the more you can put an actor in an environment where they believe they're in the environment, it does help. It does. No, I I feel that. I think it's when you're there in the moment, you know, you you fall in love with. 
the person that you're there with and in the role, you know, or you just, you're, the environment you're in, it elevates you. Even if you're just there as a traveler and you're not there filming, you know, you, you, you know, we, you and I just talked about Petra, which is a city in Jordan where mm. we've shot at before and we're going to shoot at again. And when you go to Petra, it's a gorgeous city in a red rock Canyon. That's 2000 years old. You, you, the first thing you say to yourself is this can't be real. This just can't be real. Yeah. Any place you put the camera, you you just it's it's amazing. Marrakesh has a feeling like that Marrakech too. Marrakesh is hard to be too. Yeah, it's amazing. Unbelievable. And I, so I why just, not go shoot there? Yeah. I, I my favorite that. thing is go shoot on locations. Oh, I love that. Great. How inspiring. Well, if you are a budding film <laughs> student or somebody in movies, go film on location. I think that's so magical. Yeah. That's brilliant. Well, uh, you know, it's funny because I would look at lots of movies where they're shot and they are m a lot abroad. Maybe because of costs of things as well, perhaps. Like, you don't see much filmed in L.A. or, you know, as such, you know, in the bigger cities. But it's more interesting, I think, when you get the opportunity to go abroad. Where's your favorite city in the world? Oh, there's so many. I love to travel. It's my favorite thing to do. Mm. Oh, so I, I, I love, I mean, Venice, Bangkok... Um, wow, they are completely different. Completely different, but but yeah. I, I love them. Um, I've been all over Western China, Japan. Um, yeah, I love Japan. I, yeah, I, I love Kyoto. Oh, um, I really want to go. Oh, it's great. Oh, that's and, so and, uh, beautiful. You know, we went scouting um, not too long ago in uh, Uzbekistan. Really? Oh my god, what's gorgeous. that? Is it uh, gorgeous? It's it's gorgeous. And again, you know, people, it's a it's a little, you know not thought of, but when you get to these places, you're like, oh my god, it's unbelievable. <laughs> So I, I love just going to places off the beaten track like that. That's magical. I love that. Mm. I did. Yeah, I, did, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, I no, just, you wouldn't. No, yeah. wouldn't yeah. <laughs> Is it those places? It's really nice to get lost in a city. I'm I'm from the UK, right? So we had Europe on our doorstep. That's the greatest. Uh, can you imagine? And the architecture and the way how old the buildings oh. are and the people and the everything about it was magical. You did I, I, get I, lost in Italy. I've lived in London for some periods, you know, and not too long, but like, like four months at a time. And yeah. the idea that you can just get in a train and go to Amsterdam for the weekend. Or oh, Paris. Or Paris. Know. Incredible. I went to a party, a, a flapper style. <sighs> yes, in Paris. In Paris. I thought I was in the movie. Oh, I that's mean, great. It was the most. I want to do that. How fun. We should so yeah. do that. It was back in the day when I smoked as well. So I would like. I had <laughs> you look good. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. loved it. I mean, now I just pretend. But <laughs> I just I felt the part. And yeah. I was having like drinks on the rocks and walking out to like. Oh, it was so amazing. They even had the cars. They even had like a few. Oh, that's It great. was so beautiful. If I was to ever do a movie, I think that would be, I mean, I just, that would be where I fall to. I think yeah, I'm obsessed that. with 1920s Paris. Yes, that's where yeah. I meant, by the way, my original yeah. place I'd go back to, probably less of the 40s and 50s. More yeah, than 20s. The, the 20s yeah. is exactly where I meant. But that I, I love that film, Midnight in Paris. Me too. And yeah, it's a great movie. And there's another one that takes you back in time. You know, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned from 1920s Paris because after before 1920s Paris, was World War One and then yeah. the Spanish flu. Mm. So there's a lot of, you, know, you think about all this wars in the world now and then we just went through the pandemic. Yeah. And then what happened in 1920s Paris is they just went crazy. They just, went, they partied for nine years. Yeah. And, and it was all this great art and culture and partying. And I, I, I think and I hope we're, we're going to hit that soon. I, I hope so. I think the world need I, one of our missions, movie wise, book wise, <laughs> it's just to bring fun back. Well, you are, and I, I do. You, do you speak about the other project we spoke about with the photography? Yeah, we can talk about. Oh it. my god! Yeah. So we have a book coming that we can't talk about, but it's called Malibu Blonde, and it's a photography book. And <clears throat> by the way, it's sensational. Like it's absolutely breathtaking. I'd, like, it's as good as your films. Like, <laughs> I'm blown away. I did, when you but said still go see the films. <laughs> you know, the films are still amazing, but this is pretty cool. It's great. Like and it's so, you know, I moved to Malibu um, a, a little while ago and didn't intend to stay, but I live there now. And I found everywhere I went in the world, even rural China, if you say Malibu, people, it immediately evokes this image of you know Beach Boys music and 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 red convertible Mustangs and puppy dogs and you know pretty women on the beach cavorting around and playing and and it's just a time that was free and fun and playful and spirited and so I decided to do a coffee table book of that time because I don't think there's enough of it it's just pure it's it's sexy but in a fun playful way and every penny I make from it goes to endangered elephant charities so, so we thought why not do a book that makes people happy and why not stop with people why not make elephants happy too yeah and so that's the book I love and so it. we want to have a book and, a, and it will do a, um, some gallery shows around the world oh, i'm so excited because yeah. i love it it's yeah. like uh it's just so beautiful it's sort of my ode to that to, to malibu in that world and mm. and it's really interesting because 
people really are a little hesitant to have fun. But this happens in the world. If you read a lot of history, you know, it, it goes up and down and up and down and up and down, and then eventually people just need to release break again. Well, we're going to come again. to that. We're going to come to that. That's why I did the book. I think yeah. we're going to. Yeah, yeah we are. We absolutely. We, it's like a kettle exploding out the top at some point because yeah. everyone's been so suppressed by the pandemic and yeah. what happened. So this is like a release and it's so yeah. beautiful. It's kind of like an orgasm. <laughs> it's like, it just like has to happen. And like it's... Buy it's, this book. It's kind of like an orgasm. That's a good tagline. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. actually a great tagline. <laughs> Afterwards, we're going to play with this name. Oh yeah. my God. I love it. <laughs> or <laughs> OMG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, no, your photography is pretty sensational. I, I really enjoy it. Okay, well, I think that's all we have time Great. for today. Thank it's you been so an much. amazing show. Tell me I'm time. so I'm so grateful. This has been so fun and I, I'm grateful to have you as a friend in my life. And Thank you, you too. You know, you're a really special human and you really are up to some. And the good thing, thing is me and your mom like this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I know. Like my mom just in years is like boom, just like yeah, so it's so beautiful. She yeah, she said after she was like I really like Larry. I was like, yeah, he's great. <laughs> listen to your mother. Yeah, listen to your mother. She's so wonderful. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's show as much as I have. This has been such a sensational moment. I feel like I've gone back in time. I want to take you to a few little places around the studio so you can see. You may have even seen them throughout this episode, just as we've been talking about it, all these wonderful things with Mortal Kombat and other movies, etc. And make sure you share it with a friend. If you would like this episode to go to one of your friends, just send them the link and they will be able to listen to all of Larry's handles are below everything that you want the book is coming out soon so make sure you save this and get yourself your pre-ordered copy and time so when it arrives you can hold that up and know I got a touch of the madness thank you so much for tuning in today thank I'm you. your host Natasha Graziano this is Larry Kazanoff and I'll see you again soon